Welcome back to Bible and Blues, and tonight we are doing Legion Episode 3, marching our way through that, trying to get caught up. Uh, is a new Arizona episode is airing tonight that we'll get to that, trust me, I promise we'll get to it. So, um, I wasn't actually planning on doing one tonight, I wasn't planning on watching it and then doing, doing a video tonight, but yeah, my, uh, my guitar teacher had to cancel on me because he was sick, so... On the uh, on on the downside, I didn't get my guitar lesson tonight, which I actually love doing. On the upside, I have probably time to do this, and I'll have a one-hour lesson next week. And I didn't practice like I was supposed to this week, so this will give me a chance to make up for that a little bit. So, hey, uh, so that's an extra bonus, right? So, okay. So I'm gonna minimize that so I stop looking at my screen and look at the camera instead, because you know, yeah. So the opening to this uh was um okay I, I made a note of this because it seems like every advanced sci-fi kind of show you know i mean you know, whether it's a cult show or what there's communal showers uh, co-ed showers i should probably be more accurate and it's just kind of a you only see this in the movies I don't, personally i wouldn't be comfortable with it okay taking taking a shower with you know a, a strange girl there I, I, I mean the my ability to avert my eyes is only so strong you know what I mean so you know so anyway just I put that out there because you know that's that's I, I see that you see that occasionally in movies as you know it's just a titillating scene for people I don't know uh, to introduce you to the concept they're so advanced so then we move on to uh, Melanie is um, getting a cup of coffee. Okay. There's a rather interesting coffee pot. When you ask for a cup of coffee, it tells you a story. And it seems like it tells the same story over and over again about the woodsman. And so it goes through, it, it tells a story, and then she has her coffee cup. As she, you know, it tells a story. It, presumably, the story takes about as long as it takes for the cup, you know, the cup to brew. And then you get your coffee and, you know, she pours it out and uh, gets another cup. And uh, when she does that, you know, the story starts over. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, there's that, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of a unique thing. We're going to find out more about that later. I can say that because spoiler, I've seen the next episode. Uh, so, um, David, uh, you know, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's having a telepathy, uh, a mental, a mental telepathy and he's seeing things, he's having visions and he sees his sister. Um, and we see what the leeches were used for. They put the, you know, the, uh, the eye put, uh, leeches on her and, and stuff. And, you know, which would be creepy. It would be, you know, if, you know I, I don't know if I'd call it quite a form of torture, definitely unpleasant. Uh, certainly not something I would want to have happen to me. So he sees her, he sees her, and so the stress is continuing on him. Uh, they, you know, they they go into um, um, to doing the memory work, and uh, Patamani. Did I say it right? I hope so. Patamani uh, uh, has um, uh, has a plan, so he knows which memory he's going to first. And. You know, they're asking, you know, uh, you know, it starts out, uh, David's having a fight with his then girlfriend and, you know, she takes off and, and he's standing over the sink and they're asking him, so, you know, what, what was the fight about? And he's, and he's like, I don't know, you know, we, you know, we had a lot of fights. We did a lot of fighting in that relationship when we were together and all of a sudden the bread basket, which has, you know, it turns out has bagels in it, starts shaking and he goes, oh, he remembers which fight this is. So uh, this is the one where the, the kitchen explodes. And all, and so that was a, a, a pretty cool scene. And so what caused the fight? And so he now he remembers because he remembers. What, so it goes back and his uh, drugs caused the fight. Uh, he was there with his friend Lenny. Lenny and him, he were doing the vapor stuff, whatever that is. 
and uh you know so and you know lenny definitely was a co- was part of the problem without a doubt um sometimes guys you know when your girlfriend doesn't like your friends they're right so and then he sees he sees the demon the yellow eyed demon you know uh, and uh, is in, is in the memory and uh, and is coming around the corner and looking at him not the him that he's remembering the him that's there you know uh, is doing the work and so uh so it's actually being affected you know he's he's actually affecting that aspect and he's like don't you see that thing and they they can't see a thing they can't see it at all uh, so you know he's freaking out and all of a sudden he teleports the entire group you know out of the 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 memory cube which is where they you know the really weird cube in the woods that I don't understand uh so um so they te- they teleport the entire you know all three of them to the memory cube and they leave uh the only one left in the memory cube is uh Sid who wasn't in doing the memory work she was just there playing a supporting role for David um so uh so which was really you know pretty cool I mean uh, autonomy was was pretty impressed by it you know he just teleported all three of us 600 feet through two walls and that's that's pretty impressive so teleporting one foot would impress me uh so later on david's sitting on the on this little dock by the lake or river i mean it looks like a lake it's still water and he and he and sid are are, are, you know chit-chatting and talking and you know, they they kind of dive into the concept of, you know, and he's like, you know, sometimes I can feel long hair like I had it when I was when we were, when we were switched, and you know, um, and this that and the other, and um, Sid starts talking about, you know, uh, you know, you know, he's he's like all concerned about, you know, it's like your body and stuff like that, and she's like, you know, I. I've been in so many, so many different bodies, and they occupy mine. When when it happens, this doesn't really feel like my body that much per se it's uh uh it's really a weird connection that she has to it um and you know because she said she's been an old chinese man and uh i, I think she said asian man uh she, he's, she's been a 300 pound black woman and a five-year-old child you know she's been you know, and you know for for her is really nothing that unusual to uh be in other people's bodies which would be weird for anybody else so you know but one thing she talks about, she talks about, you know, one thing that she knows for a fact now is because of what she's done is that we have a soul. There is more to us than our corporal beings, which I thought that was kind of a nice touch. You know, as a Christian, you know, I, I, I like that. So, um, Carrie, he's, he has he, he has to do some other work with Carrie, which is, uh, you know, he, he's uh, that older guy with it had the the MRI machine. Uh, well, the MRI machine isn't in that room anymore. Surprise, surprise. They haven't managed to get that back in there. But they have some other equipment. And uh, David's sitting in that, in, in a chair. And, and they're, they're going to they're going to inject him with uh, some um, some dye, basically some tracing elements to make it easier to trace certain things. And, you know, if you work in a hospital and you're know, do, doing certain things, this is not that uncommon. Um, not unheard of, at least. And so really for a junkie, for a guy who was a junkie, you know, I mean, yeah, true. We never see him doing needles. He was in this vapor stuff, but yeah, you know, he was, he was, he was surprisingly squeamish about needles. So I, I can relate a little bit because I did quite a few drugs, never did needles. And so to this day, I do still have a problem with needles. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if, you know, if it's a, if it's a triggering thing for a junkie, maybe to, uh, who has done needles to have to use a needle for medical purposes might cause cause a memory. I don't know. Yeah. Like I said. So this time, uh, Carrie is telling him, think of a stressor. Uh, think, think of something that really stresses you out. So he goes back in his mind and he thinks about a Halloween. And when he was, a, when he was a kid, we typically have the same kid, um, about 10, 11 years old. Um, so, uh, he's out there. He's with his sister and his dog, and uh the beagle and you know he's out you know trick-or-treating and they lose track the the dog gets away runs into somebody's yard he goes to find the find the dog and there is the angriest boy uh and and you remember the book the angriest boy so 
uh, this is holding some some more significance in this story because it's uh, it's it's a it's a person in a costume, but it's a, but it's the huge head of the angry angriest boy. So um, you know, it's it was really you know kind of unusual. Um, and he comes he comes back from that, and he's and he's like you know he starts talking saying something, and then we see them cut away to Carrie and Sid and the other Carrie. So apparently there's two Carries. We'll get to that later. Um, foreshadowing, uh, and, and David is talking, uh, uh, but they cut away to them and he's not talking. He thinks, yeah, and the funny thing is his brain activity shows, uh, you know, his speech pattern, his speech recognition is going crazy on his brain, but he's not actually talking. He's not physically talking, but in his mind, he is, he's talking, he's, he's talking to his, to, to Lenny. Lenny's there again. And, she, and uh, Lenny's, uh, uh, kind of pushing him. You know, poking his buttons a little bit. Um, you know, it starts talking about his sister being trapped by Division Three, and you know they're going to be doing some horrible things to her, and they're going to rape her, you know, stuff like that. Um, which you know, she's Lenny's just pushing his buttons. I'm not sure exactly where Lenny comes from yet. Uh, we might find out later on. This is something at least I. This is something I don't really know that much of, aside from the fact that Lenny is his friend, his drug friend. And his friend in the hospital, which is really, I'm sure there's something going to come of that. So then he reacts to all the, all, all to, to Lenny pushing his buttons and he starts to levitate. Uh, Sid runs in, runs into the room. Uh, he looks at Sid, kind of smiles. She smiles at him and he, you know, astrally projects both of them physically. I mean, they, they, they go physically, but I mean. I'm not sure how it works, but it's like it's like physical, but you know they 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 they're there spiritually though is where they go. They go to uh, his sister Amy, and she's being uh, uh, questioned. Uh, the eye is there, and then the, that old man is there, and she's being questioned by uh, by them uh, as far as you know where is Sid? I don't know where is Sid? Where is where is David? And is he? Uh, you know, did she realize you know he was uh, not normal? And uh, I did that with the paper because it's, yeah, I think the paper was messing with my uh, coloring on the uh, on, my, on my camera. So, um, but they're there, uh, you know, kind of an astral way. And he's he's saying her name, he's saying Amy, but she can't hear him. Uh, nobody can hear them. But the eye, the guy that you know, that guy, he can sense uh, her there. He can sense both of them. And so he, he can't really see them, but he can sense them. Um, and just before he gets to them, they they blink out of there and they go to uh, in the lake. They're in the lake uh, of all places. And so they come, they both pop out of the water um, for no particular reason, which is, you know, must freak some people out. Um, and they get out and she and, uh, you know, Sid looks to her and says, you start to control that, you are going to be really B.A. So I'm trying to keep this as PG as possible, by the way. Uh, so uh, they go back and, they, and they're talking to, to Melanie and Carrie. And uh, and they're explaining, you know, who they saw, what they saw. And, and it turns out Melanie and Carrie know the eye. And his name is actually named Walter. Uh, and uh, they, you know, they, this was before Division Three, before the government was involved. And Melanie's husband and Carrie started this this place. And started finding people, and one of the first ones they found was Walter, and but Walter was not like them. Walter was, has a, has a cruel streak in him. Um, you know, he wants to use his power to you know to hurt people. So yeah. So, um, you know, then uh, you know some bad dreams happen. Uh, Sid, Sid's having some bad dreams about what Dave is dealing with. And she, she wakes up all of a sudden and Dave is not in his bed. Remember that whole, their, their beds are these, you know, the, 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 I told you it was those Navy kind of beds. Well, apparently she's in an upper one and then he's down and just over from her. Now on the one, on the one hand, I kind of see where it'd be, you know, safe and perfectly fine because, you know, you can't touch her without switching bodies and then you're going to be all screwy. 
and everything. You know, I get that. So the so the being in the same room, same bedroom, and then, you know, and everything, there's an appropriate this this probably not going to be an issue. At the same time, I think it ranks right up there with the communal showers too. So that's just there. That's my thinking. Do you think that's kind of weird? I, so I don't know. If you saw it, comment what you think. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, he's not he's not in his bed. Uh, so she hears, uh, you know, a voice and it's actually one of the automated voices in the shower and he's kind of hunkered down there. And I think that first scene was actually just to kind of introduce us to their showers. Maybe, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Um, that was the opening scene. I don't know. Cause there he is. He's sitting there, he's hunkered down and he's thinking to himself and she comes and, and she sits down and, and they start talking and, and she's, and you know, she wants to go um, on this next memory trip uh, because, you know, she wants to protect him, of course, as best she can. Uh, and you know, she's scared for her, you know, for the man she loves and he doesn't want her to go. And he's like, you know, and, and, and she, he's like, he's embarrassed for his past. And I can understand that. He's like, you know, I was a junkie. I did things. I did bad things. I stole things. I hurt people. You know, it was not, I, you start to see these memories. You're going to think differently about me. And I can understand that concept. Um, so he confesses a little bit to Sid, uh, you know, and she kind of says, you know what? I can handle this. This is going to happen. I'm going to be there and you're not going to stop me kind of thing. Uh, so, um, so they do the, uh, uh, they do it. And this time they do sedation. Uh, they sedate him down a little bit so that he's not as alert and awake through the whole thing. So uh, what that means, though, is that uh, he's there as his child self because the adult David is more sedated. And that just kind of leaves the, the, the one that's awake is the child David. And it's the same child we keep seeing. So same age, you know, 10, 11 years old. Um, so. Uh, they start off uh, at that, you know, the, you know, you see some stuff where uh, uh, he's he's at the break in where he broke into his, his therapist, Dr. Poole's office. Um, and he's, you know, kind of grabs some stuff. It looks like a regular, you know, break in to get stuff for, dro- for drugs. He's just kind of, you know, grabbing stuff, you know. And then all of a sudden he he's, he has a vision of himself and Dr. Poole sitting there doing a, doing a session and then there's the tape recorder, reel to reel tape recorder. So he realizes, hey, I want those tapes. You know, I want, you know, says, not sure why. So he starts digging through them. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so Sid sees him, uh, uh, you know, is watching him, of course. Um, and then she sees a vision of him outside of that where he's taking all that reel to reel magnetic tape and he's shoving it in his mouth like he's eating it. And uh, then, you know, I mean, things are starting to happen. The walls are starting to shake. Things are getting kind of, kind of scary. And she's like, you know, something's something bad's about to happen. We need to get out of here. And, but Melanie and Tonomi and, and Tom, Tomini, Tomini are, 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 they can't tell. They're acting like absolutely nothing's wrong. They see nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, but Sid definitely does see something out of the ordinary. So she does see something out of the ordinary. And then, a crack forms in the, in the wall behind them. Uh, and it's, it's red light coming through it and hands are reaching through it. And it's, and and it looks pretty creepy and she can see that they still can't see anything. All of a sudden child David takes off running through the door and the door actually just leads to another memory. And this is the, this, and, and they're back in the memory of, of him, him as an adult with Lenny on the floor, uh, doing the vapor stuff. Uh, Sid chases him down and they, and they get separated from, uh, from Melanie and, uh, and Tonomy, Tomini, help me with that, please. Uh, so he, they've got to change his name is killing me here. So they, she, she follows, she follows him through that room and then into another room. And this is his childhood bedroom. Um, this, and you know, she pulls, she pulls a dresser over the door to, to block it. And, and so she, you know, she's run, she's, you know, she's like, David, do you, do you have a place where you, where you always hide? And so they run, they run to do that. Cause she, she still knows something bad's about to happen. 
Now I'm trying to remember, did she see, I think she did. She saw the demon. She saw at some point in time, she saw the yellow eyed demon during this session. I can't remember exactly where it was, but I know she did. Um, so she's seen quite a bit more than anybody else is. And it's probably the emotional connection that she has with David. So she goes, uh, um, you know, they, they, you know she, she, she's following young David, child David, and he opens up a vent in the wall, climbs in, and he's in this huge ducting. Okay, and this is not supposed to be household ducting, but whatever, it's fine. It's, it looks like cold air return. And so he starts crawling through it. She's following him. Now, in the meantime, uh, before while, while he was opening up the grate and as he was climbing in, uh, the angriest boy shows up in the hallway. As, uh, and so, you know, you know, now she's now she's following, you know, David to get into the, into there to get away from him. And uh, so that got got pretty scary there for a second. Uh, she wakes up after being in the ventilation. OK, a, a, after being in there, she before the angriest boy gets to her, uh, she wakes up. So um, and then she's, you know, she's she goes and she, you know, she can't touch him. So she goes and uh, and uses a pillow and beats it on the chair that of uh, that Tummy is on, uh, which is you know the kind of weird thing is she hit the chair, she wasn't willing to hit him with the pillow, because she wouldn't be touching him. But the pillow, I, I don't know, she 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 hit the chair with the pillow instead of him. I would have just hit him. Would have woken him up faster. Uh, but Melanie is still is still down. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so you know she's she's able to get uh, Tom, Tommy awake, but Melanie doesn't wake up. Now Melanie ends up, you know, next we see Melanie in the childhood home where Sid just left. Okay, I know this is moving pretty quick here, and this is all very dreamlike, so it's a little disjointed, but not too bad, I don't think. Um, they're in the childhood home, and Melanie is in is in the bedroom. Uh, she moves uh, the dresser that. Uh, Sid had pulled in front of that door. Well, that door was a closet door. So Melanie finds, opens up the opens up the closet door, looks in there, and you think something's going to jump out, right? You know, but uh, what she does is she finds the book, the Angriest Child book, and she's flipping through it, and then she's you know she's touching a, 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 one of the pages, and the book slams shut on her. Okay, and. I mean, it's 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 got a really bad. It's it's a thin book, but it's it, but it, it's it's slammed shut on her, and behind her is the uh, the demon, you know, the yellow eyed demon. Uh, so you know, he's behind her, uh, and she gets she gets her hand out, and her hand's just all mangled up. I mean, it's in bad, you know, it's it's broken up. Um, but that wakes her up. So now she's awake, and uh, you know. But yeah, so, and she's not sure what all happened there, but she's, she's freaking out over her hand, but her hand's not fine now because that all happened in the, in the, uh, in, in the memory world. Uh, so her hand is okay, but she's kind of freaked out now and cut scene. It's over. Show's over. That's it, uh, for episode three. So, um, you know, th- there's a lot going on here, uh, but it was, it wasn't too bad. I don't think I, it was a lot of, it was, it was a, it was centered around David. Uh, so I thought that went pretty well. Uh, so um, what did you think? Did you watch the show? Did you like it? I know, I, I, you know, I know one person at least is just kind of following on along on the, um, uh, the story here as I'm doing it. But um, uh, so I enjoyed it. Uh, hey, if you like what I'm doing here, uh uh, subscribe, like what, you know, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, uh, subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell that's down there. Uh, this, this, this right, this right down here for the notifications. Okay. So you can, uh, so you can find out when I put new stuff out there. Uh, God bless you. Have a great day and, uh, what's left of it. And I am going to head for bed. Good night folks. <laughs>